which keyboard shortcut would you use to complete AutoSum function in Microsoft Excel? There are four different options offered to you in the screen. Alt plus equal sign, Alt plus S, Alt plus D, and Alt plus A. Which one would you choose? This is one of the typical questions being asked as part of Excel interview and assessment test. Let me share with you a little bit more information about Excel and Excel assessment test before I give you the answer. Microsoft Excel is used by a variety of professionals to import, process, and analyze data. A lot of jobs require you to pass Excel assessment test as part of the hiring process. In this video, I'll give you the answer to the typical Excel assessment test question. I'll show you some tips and tricks how to get prepared, and I'll give you some ideas about the questions being asked during the interview and Excel assessment test. Now let's go back to our original question and I'll show you how to come up with the right answer. A lot of times during Excel assessment test, you will be tested on your knowledge of Excel keyboard shortcuts. In this particular question, you're being asked what is the keyboard shortcut of the auto sum in Excel, and you present it with the four different choices. So there are four different shortcuts. The first one is Alt equal, Alt S, Alt D, and then Alt A. What do you think is the right answer? One thing to keep in mind here is that there are only two keyboard keys that you need to press. For example, plus sign is not plus sign that you press on the keyboard. Plus sign another key, for example, equal sign. Alt and another key, for example, capital S. So with that in mind, what do you think is the right answer? There are multiple ways to trigger auto sum function in Excel. For example, if you have a set of values, and typically it's in numerical values, like in the column B in this case, you can trigger auto sum function by just clicking on the auto sum, and you see that automatically on the home tab, auto sum in editing section, it shows you the shortcut. So for example, if you know where the sum function is, you can quickly find what the shortcut is. And in this case, the answer is Alt plus equal sign. And once you trigger this shortcut, it highlights the area, and once you click Enter, it inserts the sum of the values. As you probably figured out by now, the correct answer to the question is A, Alt plus equal sign. And once you press the shortcut after selecting all the values, you will get auto sum function triggered, and then you just need to hit Enter to execute it. To learn more about shortcuts used in Excel assessment test, I recommend my PDF ebook that you can download from my website. In this ebook, I have the entire section dedicated to Excel keyboard shortcuts. You can see that the section here covers Excel shortcuts, frequently used shortcuts, formatting, function key shortcuts, navigational shortcuts, column and row shortcuts, and then control shortcuts. All of these shortcuts have been selected based on the questions we see on the tests. And in addition to shortcuts, you will also find top 50 Excel interview questions and Excel assessment test questions used during Excel assessment test to get you ready and get you hired uh, for your new employment. Now let's look at the top questions that are being asked as part of Excel assessment test. Let's look at the question, which function can be used to remove unwanted space from a cell? And what you see here on the list, you see a column A populated with values, and some of these values have multiple spaces. For example, in between words, uh, there's a series of spaces. And four choices are presented. And you see the text here is uh, not in English. Some of the words are in English. So you have to pick the function that would be working not just in English, but in any other language. And four choices are presented. We have a choice of remove space, clear function, trim function, delete char function. So what do you think is the right answer? And the correct answer is a trim function. When you start typing in column B and you type trim, you see this uh, help here that comes from Excel. It removes all spaces from a text string except for a single spaces between words. What you need to do, you need to type the trim function and then in parentheses put the cell A2, which would uh, reference the cell in the column A, and then hit enter. And you see that it removed all extra spaces. And then what you need to do, you need to just drag it across the area using the drag button, which was available right here in the bottom left corner. And then you see that all extra spaces have been removed. Other choices presented in the test are not valid choices. For example, if you start typing remove, or you need to type clear, or any other choices that's presented in the quiz, you will not find those types of functions in Excel. So this particular question relies on your knowledge and understanding that 
trim function is available and this is what it's used for. If you have a choice of uh, working and accessing Excel document during the test, you can quickly run a test and eliminate choices A, B, and D from the list because they are not valid choices and these functions don't exist in Excel. And by now you probably figured out that the correct answer is C, which is a trim function, which is used to remove unwanted spaces and I showed you the format of how to use this function. If you would like to take a shortcut and get prepared faster, make sure to check out the description of the video and download available materials. Please make sure to check out my ebook, Top 50 Excel Interview and Assessment Test Questions. It not only provides you insider view of the testing process, but also gives you top questions and answers, keyboard shortcuts, allows you to learn the best ways to prepare for the test. You can also learn what to do when you arrive for the test, and it gives you tips and tricks and hacks to get ready. Links to available downloads are in the description of this video. Let's look at the question, which Excel formula would you use in one cell to generate random numbers between 200 and 500 in the range between B2 and F13? And it shows you a sample of the random values, which has values after decimal point, and the range we're looking at between B2 and F13 populated with the numbers in the predefined range. And there are four choices. We have RAND, RAND between, RAND array. All three of those are valid Excel functions. And then the choice D, none of the above. So how would you answer? What do you think is the right choice? And if you followed along during the practice exercise, you probably learned that the RAND array is the right function. And the key here is that it asks in one cell. So to use the RAND array function, you would use this syntax. You will specify how many rows will you need to add, how many columns, which is five in our case, what is the range of values, 200 through 500, and then you will decide if you want any values after the decimal point. And if we hit enter, it will populate our values with the random numbers in the predefined range. You probably can consider other functions like rand or rand between as valid choices to answer this question if there wouldn't be a statement here to use in one cell. Because rand array really expands, you put it in one cell and then expands into the other cells to populate all the required values. So the correct choice here is rand array and all other choices are designed to trick you. Let's look at the typical Excel tests you get as part of the hiring process. A lot of people are asking the question, what kind of Excel test I'm most likely to get during assessment test? There are multiple types of tests that you can get. One of them is multiple choice, where you're usually given questions and typically four, five, or three possible answers. It depends upon test provider. Another test that you can get is the interactive test, where you get Excel application with the series of steps that you need to complete. And then there are some other choices that uh, you might get during Excel assessment test. We conducted a survey on our channel to better understand what kind of questions people typically get today. And the results from this survey are here on the screen. Most of the time you will get interactive test, 68% of the time. There is also possibility for multiple choice test, which happens 24% of the time. And then there are some other possibilities, which counted as 8%. Thanks for everybody who participated and provided the answers to this question. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. To create new tab in Excel, what would you do? And the right answer here is, you click the plus sign next to the existing Excel sheet. When you open up new Excel sheet, next to the sheet one, there is a small plus sign. And to create a new tab, you just click on the plus sign and that creates a new sheet. You see, I just clicked and it created sheet two. And here's the correct answer. Keep in mind that term Excel tab is the same as Excel sheet and they used in questions and help documentations interchangeably. Let me share with you the best ways to learn and get prepared for Excel assessment test. You need to dedicate uninterrupted chunks of time. And when your attention drifts, make sure you take a break. You can download workbooks and repeat steps in the workbooks to make sure you understand how this exercise has been completed and done. I also recommend that you watch this video from start to finish. A lot of times there are tips and tricks and hacks shared in one part of the video that might be applicable to another part of the video and I don't want you to miss any of it. Make sure you download all the materials offered in the description of this video. And when you're watching, set the playback speed so that it keeps you engaged 
and gives you time to absorb the content. Here in this video you have everything you need to get you prepared. Here is the variation of this question which provides you with the different choices. To create new sheet in Excel, you use Ctrl T keyboard shortcut, click File New Sheet, click New Icon on the Quick Access Toolbar, or right mouse click on existing sheet and select Insert. Let's use Exclusion to answer this question correctly. Exclusions is one of the methods where you exclude possible choices to come up with the right answer. Ctrl T keyboard shortcut is used to create new tables, not new sheets. File New Sheet option doesn't exist in Excel menu. New icon in the Quick Access Toolbar create new workbook, not a new sheet. So through the method of exclusion, we came to choice D, which is the right mouse click on existing sheet and select Insert. To create new sheet in Excel, you right mouse click on the sheet 1, click Insert, and select Worksheet, and it added a new worksheet into Excel spreadsheet. So the right choice here is choice D, right mouse click on existing sheet and select Insert. Other choices are designed to trick you to believe that you might be the right answer, but they are not the valid option in Excel or incorrect for this particular question. A lot of people ask, how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they're getting. If you know the answer to the question that you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Very frequently, you might be asked how to solve specific problem during Excel assessment test. For example, in this question, you will be asked how to calculate total units sold by Jason and you present it with the table down below, which shows months, salesperson, and number of units sold information. One of the salespeople here is Jason, uh, but there are also other salespeople. And the question is, what would you use? How can you find out total numbers of units sold for Jason? And the presented choices is multi-sum, sum if function, if sum function, or sum formula. Which one would you use? Typically in Excel, when you have no conditions, you can just use SUM function and calculate total of SUM of values. In our case, we do have one condition, as we need to calculate units sold for JSON. And for that, we would need to use SUM IF function. This is how SUM IF function will look like to calculate the required values. We have a range of B2 through B11, which is the names of salespeople, and we are finding our values for JSON which is the value of A15. And then we're getting the sum of values in the column C with the range of values C2 through C12. So when we hit enter to complete the calculation, uh, for JSON, 361 units have been sold. So the correct value for this question is value B, sum if function, because sum if function used to calculate sum of values when you need to calculate sum with one criteria condition. And this is the syntax of the formula that you can use. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up to tell us that you need more content like this. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Very often, you might be asked the question on how to perform specific function in Excel. For example, in this question, which formula you would use to remove a percentage sign and convert it into space? In, in the example given, you see that in column A, there are values that have percentage sign in between the words. And in column B, the values already replaced percentage sign with the space sign. And the choices presented are replace, remove, find and replace function, and substitute function. So which one would you choose? The correct answer is to use substitute function. And the syntax would be substitute, then you reference the uh, cell A1, and then you're saying that you're substituting percentage sign with the space. The easiest way to replicate the values from uh, cell B2 would be to drag the values down, or you can also use copy uh, by clicking the copy button, then selecting the area for which you would like to replicate the value, and click and paste button. So the correct answer here is D, substitute function, because this function replaces any unwanted word with the word that you want. The tricky part of this question, and that there is a also option that looks very, very valid, 
for example, find and replace function. But find and replace is the functionality in Excel. There is no such function as find and replace. So you need to be careful and read the entire answer and make sure you're not making the mistake. The only function that exists is substitute that can make this uh, substitution of percentage sign with the space. If you would like to take a shortcut and get ready for Excel interview and assessment test faster, make sure to check out my ebook. In this ebook, we cover top 50 Excel interview and assessment test questions. I provide you with the answers. We focus on the keyboard shortcuts that most frequently are tested as part of the test. I share with you some important considerations how you can get ready for the test faster, best ways to get prepared, tips and tricks of what to do during the exam day, how to best manage your time taking the exam, and a lot of other tips, tricks, and hacks for answering multiple choice questions. To download ebook, make sure to use the link in the description of this video to take advantage of discounted price I offer to my subscribers. Let's look at the question, how to highlight duplicate values by using conditional formatting. What you see on the screen here is the set of values in two columns, fruit ID and then fruit name. And uh, you see in green some of the values that are duplicates. Um, you see grapes that are duplicates, you see lynchy, you, had, you see date palm as a duplicate, and you need to highlight all of the values. And there are four possible choices. And you have all the choices pretty much the same, but the last part of the selection is different. You have identified duplicates, you have highlight duplicates, matching values, and then you have duplicate values. Seems like a technicality, but these are the types of questions that you get on the test. So what do you think is the right answer? To identify duplicates in Excel, you need to highlight all the values, and then click Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cell Rules, and then click on the duplicate values. And then here, in this dialog box, you're presented with the choices that you're selecting the duplicates, and this is the color that you choose to highlight the duplicates. For example, to replicate the question that was on the test, you need to select green field with dark green text. Click OK, and you see that all the duplicates have been highlighted. So the correct answer here is D. First, you need to select and then go to Conditional Formatting from the Home tab, and then Highlight Cell Rules and click Duplicate Values and choose your color. Keep in mind that though choices A through C are very similar looking, but they're not the same, and those technicalities are something that you'll be tested on Excel assessment test. Please make sure to check out my PDF ebook, Top 50 Excel Interview and Assessment Test Questions. It helped a lot of people to get hired. Also, consider subscribing to this channel. We have a lot of people helping each other, and here you will get answers to all your questions related to Microsoft Excel interview and assessment test. If you like the content, please share with other people who are looking for the job and will benefit from this. And give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about Excel assessment test or would like to share with us what are the recent questions that you're getting during the test, please make sure to leave them in the comments. We have a community of dedicating people helping each other to pass the test. All the best on your Excel interview and assessment test.